Hello and thanks for listening. Welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Not long ago, there was a lot of hype about hydrogen power, for cars specifically. Most of us studying space science were very skeptical that this could be a viable fuel source for the automotive industry. The most common isotope of hydrogen is composed of one proton and one electron. If you add a neutron, you get heavy hydrogen also called deuterium. You can use deuterium to make heavy water. Whereas normal water has an atomic mass of 18, heavy water has over 10% more mass at 20 atomic mass units. But this form of hydrogen is much less common on Earth. And there is a third isotope of hydrogen. If you have one proton and two neutrons, you get tritium. Tritium is not stable. Twice as many neutrons as protons will cause one of the neutrons to decay into a proton and a high-speed electron. This high-speed electron is called beta radiation, and this type of decay is called beta decay. It is mediated by the weak nuclear force. Tritium has a half-life of a little more than 12 years and is used in thermonuclear warheads. Since protons determine the element, an atom with two protons and one neutron is no longer hydrogen. It is now helium-3. Helium-3 is one of the best aneutronic fusion fuels possible. But tritium is exceedingly rare on Earth, and so is helium-3. Normal hydrogen, though, is one of the most abundant elements in the universe. About 75% of the sun is hydrogen, but almost all of the hydrogen on Earth is bound with other elements. Each molecule of water has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. If we could separate these and store them, we would have a very efficient fuel. Running hydrogen with oxygen is a very energetic reaction. Hydrogen rocket fuel provides the highest specific impulse. But separating hydrogen from oxygen is not easy. When these lock together, they give off a lot of energy. And pulling them apart takes a lot of energy also. There are two main methods of hydrogen production. One method is by hitting methane with superheated steam. This is called steam methane reforming. The steam is at a temperature of 700 to 1000 Celsius at a pressure of 3 to 25 bar. I'm going to try to use bar from now on since I messed up megapascals not long ago. A bar is about 99% of normal sea level atmospheric pressure. Natural gas, also known as methane, is combined with the steam over a catalyst to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Then the carbon monoxide is reacted over a catalyst with the steam to produce carbon dioxide and more hydrogen. To my fellow humans concerned about the environment, you produce high temperature steam using fossil fuels. You have methane gas wells that inevitably allow methane to escape into the environment. Methane is a much more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Then you produce the hydrogen and a lot of carbon dioxide. This is not a clean method of hydrogen production, but there is another way. If we put an electrolyte like salt into water and apply an electric current, hydrogen, with its positive charge, will migrate to the negative terminal, and oxygen, with its negative charge, will migrate toward the positive terminal. This is not always a very efficient reaction, but we can use advanced materials, like polymer electrolyte membranes, to get the efficiency up to about 70%. Now if we use coal to produce the electricity, we haven't done much to reduce carbon emission. But if we use solar, we should have the perfect fuel, except for a few problems. A kilogram of hydrogen has more potential energy than almost any other chemical fuel. But hydrogen is not a very dense substance. Hydrogen gas was used to lift the zeppelins, and even if we cool it down to a liquid, the low density of hydrogen is why that orange tank on the space launch system is so massive. We must also cool it down to 20 Kelvin, which takes a lot of energy, and a cubic meter is pretty large. The average American gas tank is 26 gallons. That works out to only 0.098 cubic meters, about one-tenth. That means you're either going to need a tank 10 times bigger, or you will need to put the hydrogen under a lot of pressure, 350 to 700 bar in fact. These tanks can store up to 5 kilograms of hydrogen. This will get a car about 480 kilometers or 300 miles, 
when you compare the energy efficiency of just using solar power to charge your electric car and add in the infrastructure cost and danger of refueling your vehicle with super cold, super high pressure hydrogen, there is no comparison. Electric wins every time. Hydrogen is a dead end through this method. But is there any other way to store hydrogen? The Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing Technology and Advanced Materials in Germany has come up with one. Notice how often German research organizations keep coming up with cool space stuff. There is absolutely no reason why Europe, with all of its talent and wealth, could not dominate the space industry. No reason except politics and bureaucracy, that is. The only thing with more dead weight than neutronium. But back to hydrogen. IFAM has created what they call power paste. Power paste is made from magnesium hydride. When combined with the esters and a metal salt at 350 degrees Celsius at between 5 and 6 bar, this paste can store more hydrogen than a reinforced tank at 700 bar. One of the greatest limitations to hydrogen use is the extreme cold and pressure that it must be kept at. This paste solves that problem. To get the hydrogen out of the paste, squeeze a little into a chamber, heat it to above 250 Celsius, and add some water. This releases the hydrogen gas and produces some magnesium hydroxide. Half of the hydrogen produced is actually from the water molecules, as an OH is pulled away to bond with the magnesium. By the way, we can't just burn the hydrogen in an internal combustion engine. Remember that air on Earth is 78% nitrogen. The heat of hydrogen oxygen combustion is so high that some of the nitrogen in the air will burn and turn into nitrogen oxide, a very toxic pollutant. You can instead run the hydrogen through a fuel cell, where it will combine with oxygen from the air and produce electricity at a much higher efficiency and with no pollution. This product has 10 times the energy storage capacity of a lithium ion battery. The only thing holding us back from electric airplanes, ionic jet engines, and even ion to orbit power is energy density. The mass of our current batteries is just too much to provide enough energy to lift themselves off the planet. What would this product be perfect for right now? Cars maybe, but aircraft definitely. High density energy storage is holding us back from having electric airplanes. Electric motors are inherently lighter and more dependable than hydrocarbon fueled ones. Magnesium hydride could be a very viable way to fuel aircraft. Power paste can't be recharged like a lithium ion battery, but a removable cartridge would work very well, and you could send the spent cartridge back for recharging at the factory. This could be considered a primary battery. What else could we do with this? Behold the Professor Vox magnesium hydride hybrid rocket engine. We designed this specifically for this lesson. Here is a tank of high test hydrogen peroxide. Here is a valve that will release the pressurized hydrogen peroxide, allowing it to flow over this catalyst. The catalyst will cause the hydrogen peroxide to break down into two components. High temperature steam, exactly what magnesium hydride paste needs to produce hydrogen gas, and oxygen, which will burn with the hydrogen in the most energetic chemical reaction available to us. And here is the tank of power paste. When this valve opens and the hydrogen peroxide is allowed to flow over the catalyst, high temperature steam and oxygen are produced. Some of it goes down this pipe where it pressurizes this space, pressing this piston down the fuel tank, causing power paste to squeeze into the combustion chamber. These channels come off the side to allow steam and oxygen to flow into the combustion chamber where the water in the steam combines with the magnesium hydride to form hydrogen gas and magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide also burns directly with oxygen, forming more steam and magnesium oxide. These are very energetic reactions. Hydrogen produces the highest specific impulse of any fuel, around 454 seconds, and magnesium itself is a good fuel. Metallized hydrocarbon fuels produce a specific impulse of up to 400 seconds. Current hybrid rocket engines, like the one on the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2, using hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene, produce a specific impulse of only around 250 seconds. What could this spaceship do with that extra specific impulse? Remember that delta V is determined by specific impulse and the mass propellant ratio. Spaceship 2 produces 270 kilonewtons of thrust for 60 seconds, 
with a specific impulse of 250 seconds. To produce 270,000 newtons of thrust with a specific impulse of 250 seconds, F equals M dot times VE, VE equals specific impulse times 1G, so 250 times 9.807 meters per second squared equals about 2,452 meters per second. Divide 270,000 newtons by 2,452 meters per second, and we get an M dot, or mass propellant flow, of 110 kilograms per second. Multiply that times 60 seconds, and we get a propellant mass of 6,607.5 kilograms. The mass of Spaceship 2 should be around, from the few estimates I can find, 9,740 kilograms. If we start with an initial mass of 9,740 kilograms, and burn 6,607.5 kilograms of fuel, we will have a final mass of 3,132.5 kilograms. At the original 250 second specific impulse, we get a delta V of about 2,781 meters per second. If our power paste rocket is used instead, we get a specific impulse of up to 425 seconds and a delta V of 4,728 meters per second. That is not enough to get to orbit, but what about hypersonic transportation? Could the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 take off from Los Angeles and get you to New York in under an hour? Something to think about. Thanks for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and help us out on Patreon if you can. We appreciate you. At Astro Proterra.